Hey there, welcome to UB Chef and this week's recipes. This week, as usual, we're going to be cooking 10 dishes. Uh, so we've got our weekly bake, uh, then we've got three starts, three mains, two desserts and cheese. Um, I'm going to take you through all of them. As usual, really, really simple just to get all of your ingredients together. Everything has got a little sticker on the top uh, which says a number on it. Uh, that corresponds to each, sort of every number is, is for that dish. Uh, so it's very, very easy to follow. Uh, lots of fun, but it's again restaurant meal in your own home. Uh, next week we've got Valentine's menu, uh, fully booked now, so if you ordered for that, thank you so much. Uh, we are going to be very, very busy. Um, and then after that, uh, we're taking a week's break, um, just because it's been a it's been a busy old few months, uh, and the staff uh, think they need need a little need a little uh, relax. So uh, we'll be right back at the end of February. It's the weekend of the 25th, 26th of February for our next uh, menu you can order and there'll be lots of new menus going on the website in the next few days. So let's get cooking now. I'll take you through, and as I usually do, nice and simple to plate the plate dishes up. Loads of fun. Um, as always, love to hear from you. Any feedback, dish requests, if you've got dishes you want to see on our menu, uh, within reason, of course, uh, drop us an email and we'll see if we can work those in for you. So for now, let's get cooking. First dish, as always, is our weekly bake. Um, this week, I made these smoked paprika crackers. So we've just rolled this dough through the pasta machine, nice and thin, bakes it nice and crisp. Lovely smoky paprika crackers, really, really nice. So what we're gonna do, take a tray and just put all of your crackers, ideally sort of like one layer, on your tray. And then get a little uh, rapeseed or olive oil, just drizzle over the top, and then in the oven, about two minutes. So two minutes, they're just gonna warm up nicely and then what we've made you to go with it is a lemon hummus so just give your hummus a really good stir and if you want to let it down a bit if you prefer the hummus a little bit slacker no problem touch of water um, but I, the most important thing leave it out room temperature um, so you're not, not eating it fridge cold you can also put it into the pan and warm it up but just be careful not too hot otherwise it will split so I'm just gonna get on all of my hummus into my little dish. This has got lemon zest, lemon juice. Again, a little of that lovely smoked paprika in there. So, smooth that all off. And then, what I'm gonna do, touch more oil on the top. A little uh, fleck of molten salt. All on my dish. There we go. Now let's get our crackers out again. They don't need to be in there too long. There we go. More important for when it's been in transit in the box, sometimes it can get a little bit like cold with all the ice that's in the box. So uh, that's more important just to, for you guys at home just to um, get that crispness back on them if, it, if it's been lost at all. So all I'm gonna do like there is just give them a little snap and ideally you want to be serving these nice and hot but you can dip into that hummus really really nice so build them up in there like so and there we go lovely little way to start the meal paprika spiced uh, crackers lemon hummus enjoy my fish starter is this lovely lobster beast uh, so we've got beautiful creamy lobster beef uh, flavoured with blood orange. Uh, so we've got blood orange juice going through there and armagnac. Lovely flavour at this time of year, like wintery, so really lovely alcoholic uh, flavour of the armagnac in there. I'm just going to get that on my stove um, with a whisk. Really, really important, don't let it boil. Um, then you've got some uh, homemade seeded sourdough just in here, uh, which we just uh, char grilled for you. Lovely, lovely smell already coming off of that. That's in the oven, about five minutes in there, no longer, just to warm that back up again. So, this is all on heating. The reason I say don't boil it is because, at the end, we want it to be nice and frothy. So, I've got a little hand blender just set up here, ready to give it a froth. If not, just use a whisk and really whisk it hard, and then you get a lovely froth on the top. But if you boil it, um, you tend to find it won't, the, the milk, or almost um, the fat content in the milk, that's what makes it froth, um, and the cream, it won't, it won't do it anymore. So, um, garnishes with it. I've got a fennel and orange salad. So in here um, we've got some um, really nice 
um, fennel, which has been thinly sliced, um, blood orange in there, mixture of oranges, and then to serve with it, um, I've got lobster mayonnaise. So I give you lobster mayonnaise a nice stir. This is made with a lobster oil, so we'll get the bones from the lobster, um, crush them up, roast them, and then we make a beautiful oil, turn that into the mayonnaise, and you've got poached lobster and a little lobster dressing as well. So take some of your lobster dressing and just press the fennel over the top, and give that a nice stir, so it coats all of the fennel. There we go. And make sure you've got your bowl already. Just going to get that onto heat. And then, so beast already starting to see steam there. And even just with the hand blender, sorry, with the with the whisk, uh, hand whisk, you can see it already starting to prop up. So just get your a uh, little electric one in there if you've got one. And then we'll just give that a whisk. There we go. And it's just little buzzes. And almost like a froth will start coming over the side of the pan almost. And that's because we haven't boiled it. So already, if you can see that there, lovely and frothy. I can smell that armagnac and orange coming off of there. So I'm just gonna keep that just on the side of the stove. And have all my garnishes ready. My bowl is all ready to go. Now let's grab our salad. There we go. Not long in there, out it comes. And then what I wanna do is, I'm gonna sort of sit mine just on the edge of a bowl. I'm gonna take some of the fennel. I'm just gonna put some of that on the top. There we go. So, and then I'm going to take some of my lobster, little pieces. I'm just going to evenly distribute them over the top. There we go. So, that's my lobster all on. And then I'm just going to finish off with some of those orange segments just on the top there. So just get the fennel off of them. Lovely little segment. There we go. A little bit more fennel draped over it. There you go, you've got that lovely bruschetta. Mayonnaise, final stir, checking on my beast. And then just some little Little bits of that silky lobster mayo. There we go. So, we're all ready now to bake this up. So, back to my piece. Final whisk. And just put a whisk just at the side of the pan. Yeah. And then take a spoon, pour in first of all. And then take a spoon and get that lovely lobstery foam off the top. So, a bit more. This is so it's going to the table, it's nice and light at the same time. And first of all, taste the froth. And then you taste the um, sort of the, the beast underneath it, and you always get two tones of flavour from it. So then we'll just kind of sit that just on the side like that. Beautiful. Lovely lobster armagnac orange beast with a, its own bruschetta just on the side. Hope you enjoy it. One of my favourites now, this is uh, aged beef carpaccio. So in here we've got a beautiful fillet of beef, uh, which has just been uh, seared on the outside very, very quickly. And then we've sliced it really, really thin. We've got beautiful carpaccio there. Uh, we've got beef fat uh, croutons here, so we've got beautiful uh, sourdough. I'm gonna go in the oven for about two minutes. 
that's just to warm that beef fat back up again so they're lovely and moorish. And then I've got a nasturtion dressing, so really nice nasturtion oil, um, fresh nasturtion leaves, which are really nice and peppery. Uh, important, like, leave the stalk on there as well, but like, you can eat the whole thing, absolutely beautiful. And then we've got horseradish creme fraiche here, so I've got horseradish, blitzed up, creme fraiche, lemon juice, really pokey, gonna go lovely with that beef. So, what we do, take your plate, and then just cut open the beef, nice and careful with that, and then loosen the uh, little sort of backing paper that we put it on, and then that is just going to come out like so. So there it is, and then what you want to do, you can get a little palette knife, or you can kind of invert it on the top, um, but just take that beef and just sort of loosen it just off of the uh, paper that we sent it on. And then what you wanna do is just put that on the plate like so, and I'm gonna get my palette knife around the back, and I'm just loosening the beef as I go. And then what you'll find is it will just slide off that card. There we go. So, lose that, and then a little rearrange. Look at that, We've got lovely, lovely beef, like so. Don't worry, all safe. Obviously, you know, a lot of people don't like eating sort of like the meat, a uh, bit this rare, for example, but um, where it's been seared on the outside, that makes it all, all safe to eat completely. So, a little clean up around the side, and then what I'm gonna do, take a spoon, a little bit of my nasturtium dressing, first of all, Remember, this has got some lemon juice in there. Touch on our beef. And just work that in with the back of the spoon. This is essentially like your, you know, like a little salad dressing. But it's just gonna really kind of season all of that beef. So, spoon back on there. And then, a little bit of extra mold and salt. Mold and salt, like flaky, so you just get again lovely little pockets of um, sort of the salt as you eat it. And then what we're going to do? Take our creme fraiche, sharp knife again, and just cut off a very very small corner. And then what I'm going to do is almost just fold it up like a piper bag. You can practice sort of on your board first of all. Just make sure it's all coming out nicely in the bag. And then, what I'll say to do is just back and forth, like that. So you just squeeze over and over and on, the, uh, on the beef until you're done. And then, what, all that's left to do is get our uh, croutons out of the oven and we've got the nasturtium leaves. So, when you get those out, have a smell, lovely. That beef, uh, beef fat smells delicious, like Sunday lunch. And then take your croutons, and I'd say just place them. Place them as they go. So, they're just gonna, as you eat the beef, you'll get a little bit of crunch from the crouton. Then you'll get some pepperiness from the nasturtion. Different levels of flavor. Sorry if I'm really excited with food. So, a few more on there. There we go. Then, let's get some of our nasturtion leaves. And once the nasturtion goes on, that's when you want, really want to serve it fairly quickly because the nasturtion will wilt once it uh, sort of uh, touches the um, touches the dressing and the oil and the, all that acid in there. So, a few more. This is where as well, just play with like the height. Don't, don't need many ingredients at all to make a beautiful dish. There we go. Back to a dressing, give it a little stir, and then very, very light. And this is, this is exciting. This is really nice. There we go. Stunning, simple beef carpaccio 
I'll say it should be done. The sturge and beef fat croutons, horseradish creme fraiche. I'm excited for this. We've done this next dish uh, quite a few times. Uh, really, really popular, so bringing it back again. Uh, we've got a lovely wild mushroom gnocchi. In here, gnocchi, aged parmesan. That's going to go in the oven for about 12 minutes. Um, little tip, add a tiny little spoonful of water. Out of stock, but water's absolutely fine, loads of flavour. Just give it a little loosen in the oven. Six minutes down, and then a selection of wild mushrooms, which have just been sautéed, and of course your cheese toasty. So this is our own sourdough, just here. Uh, it's got a watercress and a little bechamel sauce in between, and compte, so aged compte, all braised in. They'll go in the oven six minutes. And then when it comes up to serving, you need to have your watercress puree, which is in here. Again, if you want to fill it down, a touch of water, just on the stove, give it a stir. And um, doesn't just needs warming, not, not kind of cooking. Um, and then we'll be right back once all of these are cooked up to plate up the dish. So time to get our little gnocchi all plated up. So the gnocchi are been in, been in 12 minutes. I put the mushrooms and the toasty in six minutes after. So let's get my little watercress sauce. Lovely and velvety, no cream in there, it's just an emulsified sauce of watercress, beautiful and peppery, and then we've got Madeira dressing just here. So, bowl, nice and hot. That's our toasty. And then we've got gnocchi there, and my uh, selection of mushrooms. So, to plate it, just keep it nice and clean. Full spoon of um, the watercress puree. So you can see I'm just using the back of the spoon just to sort of spread it out to a nice circle. There we go. There we go. And then let's take some of our mushrooms. And I want to still see some of them, of course, when you place it. So I'm going to start just so I can build some of the gnocchi up on the top. And to build a few of those with lovely chanterelles on the bottom. Then our gnocchi. And just be really careful with these because they'll be delicate. So spoon your gnocchi on. And again, try not to get the butter on the bottom here. That's just where we added that so it cooks with. So you've got a nice, nice little help in the gnocchi there, like so. Then we'll finish off with a few more mushrooms. There we go. Got some kale moved on. Got some chanterelle. A little on top. There we go. Almost there, let's get our toasty out. So, nice and careful with that one, it's quite delicate. So, a little rearrange. Just gonna serve that just on the side, look at that, like that. You see the colors here, like bright, vibrant green for the watercress, the mushrooms, the gnocchi. Then, give it a good stir to re-emulsify. Got some shea vinegar in there. Got that reduced Madeira, touch of lemon juice, and this is designed to cut through all those rich flavours. So, a little dressing of Madeira on the top, and then you're away to the table. There you go. Wild mushroom gnocchi, uh, compte cheese toasty, uh, with a lovely uh, fresh watercress puree. Next up, we're on to main courses, um, and we haven't done this before uh, for the delivery menu, but we've got a lovely paella. Um, so what we've done here, um, undo your paella, take out the charred lemon, so that makes it lovely and sweet where we've charred it. Put that on the baking tray, like so, and you've got your uh, lovely Isle White tomatoes there. We've semi-dried them, and then they shrivel like this, and the flavor just intensifies even more. Um, and then for your paella, what you need to do, I've sent you this cooking liquor in here. 
So the rice and everything is all part cooked, uh, but this cooking li liquor is going to kind of bring it all back together. Um, this is what I first cooked in, but then it's got some sherry to finish it off. There's white wine, loads of saffron go gone in there as well. Smoked pimento, really nice. So just pour that over your paella, and then take your foil, which we sent it with for you. Open up the foil, shiny side on the facing out, and then. Pull it up. And what you're going to do here is going to create the steam inside just to finish off cooking that rice and all of the selection of fish that's in there. So, like that, and then that's going to go in the oven about 20 25 minutes. There we go. And then, what I've also sent you with is this courgette gratin. This is going to take about six to eight minutes in the oven, it's just courgette hollowed out with the courgette in the centre sautéed, piled back in it, a touch of parmesan and sourdough crumb on the top. Uh, and then I've got this um, tomatoes and lemon, they're going to go in for about two to three minutes. So six minutes, two to three, and then we'll be back to plate. I'm just going to get my bowl heated up for my paella. So let's grab it out of the oven. There we go. There's our lemon and tomatoes. And there's my little gratin of courgette where you see all of that parmesan um, and the breadcrumbs nicely caramelised on the top. So let's get that one out. And when you unwrap that paella, just be really, really careful with steam. So we'll get that all off like that. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely smell. So, what you want to do, take a nice big, nice size spoon, and the best way I find to do this is just to lift off some of the fish, just onto your board quick. So, lift that off, some of the mussels, work quite fast here, because of course we don't want it to go cold. And then I'm going to get my rice. I'm going to spoon all of that into my... Bowl, nice and central. This is a nice, nice portion, by the way. But really, you can't have pie out of another small portion, of course. Then, I'm going to put my gratin of courgette just on the side. Lovely bit of bright green colour. Then, let's put my fish on. Some mussels around the edge. Just poke them in, like so. Now I've got some nice uh, braised cuttlefish in there for you as well. Got some big prawns. Then we'll come back, that piece of charred lemon, which is warmed up, lovely to squeeze over it now. Just gonna put that back of the dish and then let's finish it off. I'm gonna wipe some on the toes. There we go, just gonna put those different points all around it. And it's all ready, all ready to take to the table. Guests can squeeze that lemon over. Touch of rapeseed. There we go. Seafood paella, all good to go. My next main course so this week is this uh, lovely saddle of venison. So we've got saddle of venison there, it's got a chicken mousse. Uh, chicken and wild mushroom mousse in it, and I've wrapped it in serrano ham, all off the bone, all ready to go in the oven, about 10 to 12 minutes. So, in that goes, cook it a little bit less if you prefer, uh, but about 10 minutes, all, all good. Then, one serving uh, lovely spetsley this week, and um, this is like a dough, um, which uh, I've we've put parsley puree in to turn it lovely green, uh, vibrant green colour. Uh, but what you do is we make it with beer, flour, eggs, um, and then we pass it through this uh, like very coarse sieve above the water. And you get these lovely strands of dough. So, especially, it's all cooked, so you haven't got to go through all of that process. We've done the hard work for you, uh, but we sent you with some really nice grated parmesan with uh, dyed, uh, sorry, chopped parsley in there. And what we want you to do is put some of that on top of the parsley, uh, especially, sorry, and then both that 
and the uh, little uh, past it here are going to go in the oven eight to ten minutes. That's all they're going to take to heat up. So we'll wait a couple for that one to be in. And then the sauce. This is a port and green peppercorn sauce made with the venison bones. It's got a touch of red currant jelly in there. Beautiful sauce. That's just going to go next to the heat and that will get uh, cut to boil just as I serve. So we'll be back about 10 minutes uh, to serve the venison up. I'm going to get my uh, venison out now. So check on the sauce. Not boiling, just coming up to heat. And then out on our venison. It's going to rest out on the board. A couple of minutes, last thing on the plate. Then there's our specks meat with the cheese nicely melted on the top. And of course we've got our little parsnip on there. So get your plate all ready to go. Sauce, bring this over. And that's the port sauce with green peppercorn. Just to give that a little stir to make sure that's all nicely emulsified in. Beautiful. And then make sure you've got a sharp knife ready to carve your carve your venison. And then especially so that you'll find that the cheese will have melted, it almost helps it just to stick together nicely. I learned especially from uh, Germain Schwab up at Wintering and Fields a good few years ago. Couldn't remember you often you had to work very hard to get that specially right, let me tell you. So Nice little pile of that spetsley on there. There we go. Then I'm going to take my pieces of caramelised parsnip. I'm just going to put those on. Like that. And then let's come back to our venison. Now you can slice this, you can put it whole onto the plate, completely up to you. But I like to just slice it straight through the middle. So nice and sweeping kind of like cuts through like that look lovely and pink really nice tiniest bit of salt remember because it's got the serrano ham on there and then i'm just gonna nestle that in there you see you've got that when you cut it you've got a really nice chicken mousse where you can see the mushrooms just just in there and then let's finish it with a bit of sauce. Grand Banana sauce again. Learned from Germain Schwab up at Wintrigan. I should say one of the menus we've got coming up, Hair Royale, one of my favourites as well. Keep an eye out for that one. So finish it off with all that sauce and we're good to go. Hope you enjoy it. My vegetarian main course is this lovely Roscoff onion uh, here. So we set it with three, uh, three onions, all roasted. T we've taken the centre out, uh, we've chopped that, caramelised it, put it back inside. Sourdough crumb on the top. They're going to go in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. And then what I'm serving it with, I've got ale battered onion rings, these red onion. They're going to go in the oven together with this red kale, which has got a little bit of butter on. They'll be in the oven for about four minutes. Uh, just to heat them through, and then a little sauce to be so white onions cooked down with cream, seasoned, um, really nice and simple. Uh, lots of flavours of, of onion. So we'll be back uh, just at the end. Uh, once once our onions are baked, they're going to go in for the last four minutes of cooking, and then we'll be all ready to plate up. So I'm all ready to serve my Roscoff onion now. Let's get that warming up. So there's the onion. Kale. Lastly, I've got my onion rings. And just check your sauce is nice and hot. So, there we go. There you go. That's a lovely sauce of eat already. So, what I'm going to do with my onions. Tiny bit of oil, just about a little bit of shine on the top of that crumb. There we go. 
take our saucer piece. Again, I'm going to plate it by spooning all into the centre and then just using the back of a spoon just to push the puree out. The Roscoff onions are really look like nice and sweet, they're quite small. That's why we use them. So there we go, a little bit more. There we go. So let's get our onions now. First of all, touch of kale. Give that a really good drain off. Just where it's purple, you can leak quite a bit of juice sort of onto your plate. So a little bit of kale. So, a tiny bit more as a base. Then our onions. Be really careful with these, because as you lift them on, remember we've taken that peel off around the outside, so they're pretty delicate. Next onion. And then all that's left to do, obviously place this last one, just make sure that doesn't roll off. There you go is just to get our onion rings and I'm just going to sort of put one in there just sort of stand it up a few around a few just on the side there we go. a tiny bit of rapeseed just sort of dripped into that white sauce that golden colour there we go Nice little stuffed Roscoff onion with caramelised onions in the centre. Um, we've got sourdough crust, kale and ale battered onion rings. First dessert for you um, is this uh, basically really, really simple uh, Milfoy puff pastry, caramelised, uh, Madagascan vanilla cream, pink lady apples which have been baked, slowly caramelised. We've got some compressed apple and some little baby apples to go on the top. So um, what I suggest you do, um, again with the pastry in transit, it can lose a touch of its crispness. Um, if it has, just in the oven. Uh, I'm just gonna put this in just for one, two minutes. Um, you might need to put it in for sort of five, six minutes uh, just to bring it back nice and crispy. So I can just go in the oven. But keep an eye on it because it will color quite quickly. Uh, and obviously you don't, you don't want it to burn. Um, next thing, just slice those of your compressed apple. And this is again, this is just some pink lady apples which we've just sort of vacuum packed nice and tight. Just really makes the flavor lovely and almost makes them like a little translucent. And then take your pink lady apple out. Again, if you'd like, you can serve this hot, but what I suggest is serving it just room temperature. So just take it off of the paper, onto your board, just using a knife. Straighten up any of the edges. All about the lines in this type of dessert. And then get your um, either little piping bag or a little sachet of cream which you have and slice off the end. And then you've got your crab apples remaining to go with. So have a little practice pipe with the, with the cream. There you go, that's all good to go. Then let's grab our pastry out. So pastry onto our baking sheet and then little little tip get a tiny bit of this pastry cream and just put some onto your plate and when you lift the pastry off it's going to stop it from moving about so first things first take a slice of apple and pick out like your favorite piece of pastry for for the top that's mine then I'm gonna put your slice of apple on your pastry and the next one, like so. Then what I wanna do is pipe a little bit of vanilla cream onto my apple. This is the first layer. There we go. So, I'm piping little dots of it. There we go. And then lift 
your next layer just onto your, your knife so it's all ready to lift on. Repeat the same process on there. There we go. And then very, very carefully, just sit that on the top, push it down a little bit, and then go on to the top. And then what we'll do is just take a pallet knife or a little fish slice, slide it onto our serving plate, just push it down to make sure it's nice and even. And then I'm just going to put some of these little baby apples, put one just on the top there, one on the back, a little bit of pink lady just leaned up against it, and then just one more on the back. All ready to go, hope you enjoy this lovely little caramelised slice of pink lady apple and vanilla. Last dessert, we've got Black Forest Gatto. So undo your Black Forest Gatto. I suggest keeping it out at room temperature at 15 minutes as usual, just to let it warm up so it's not fridge cold. In here, uh, you've got um, at the top is a chocolate glaze, uh, lovely and shiny, and of course, there's a lovely little sprinkle of gold on the top. We've got creatine cherries going through there, we've got chocolate genoise, mascarpone cream flavored with Kirsch. Uh, so let's get that onto our little board, and then I'll send you with some cherries. So let's add those on the top. These have just been lightly poached. So I'm just gonna put a few of those in there just for a little freshness. And then we're gonna finish off a little bit of fun, a bit of uh, like honeycomb chocolate. So just snap some pieces of your chocolate, just sort of very lightly push them into the top of uh, Black Forest. And they're really nice and crunchy, so nice little textures. There we go, Black Forest Gatto, all ready to serve. My cheese course this week is this lightly set Roquefort cream. So Roquefort, that little tinny taste, blue cheese going through there. Verjou jelly set on the top, uh, lovely and stringent green grape juice, uh, that's on there. Then I've got some compressed celery with it. So this is some celery, which has just been sealed um, in a little celery juice. So just take a little bit of that out on your board. There we go. And then I've also got a little dressing. There's you again, but with some nice apple, fresh apple, uh, diced in there, and then some rock for shortbread. So the shortbread, um, you can serve room temperature. I like to just put them in the oven, one minute, two minutes, just to warm up. So not long at all. And then whilst that's doing that, let's take some of your, these lovely sort of vibrant green pieces of celery and let's just sit them on top of the Roquefort cream. And again, celery, cheese, really, really nice. Just something a little bit different where it's been compressed. So a few nice pieces of that. And then I'm gonna get some of the dressing. Give it a nice little stir. And first of all, take some of those apple chunks before you get lots of dressing on there. And make sure you get those on first of all, because that's, that's a really nice flavor from the fresh apple. And then finish off with some of the dressing. Like so, onto your serving plate. And let's get our shortbread out. The idea of this is serving them warm, but you can kind of dip into it. It's going to melt nicely as it goes. So try and get the mold and salt I'm going to put on top of them just before I serve them. And I'll just put those just on the edge, and away we go. So that's our cheese course: Rock for cream, Rock for shortbread, celery, apple, and verjus.